Hello friends, press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more such easy videos. Hello friends, I am back with a new video and this video will help you a lot with respect to ecological pyramids. There are three types of pyramids, that is pyramid of number, pyramid of biomass and pyramid of energy. When we talk about pyramid of number, it is purely based on the relation between producers, herbivores and we can say the carnivores. Now it is with respect to number that is the most important thing. Let's talk about the pyramid in grassland ecosystem. So there are more producers than the primary consumer, then secondary consumer and least will be tertiary consumer. It simply means that the grassland pyramid is upright. So look at this with respect to number. When you talk about parasitic food chain, the parasitic food chain will have less producers, least in fact and maximum will be tertiary consumer. It means what? That the pyramid in case of parasitic food chain is inverted where the producers are less and the hyper parasites are more in number. When we talk about pyramids of biomass, it is basically the relation between the producer, herbivores and carnivores with respect to biomass. So let's take the example of grassland ecosystem. There will be more producers than the primary consumer then the secondary consumer and least will be tertiary consumer. When you look at the biomass, we need to understand it is always upright pyramid. Look at the numbers and the biomass, the energy, you can understand that the carnivores is the least and producers are the maximum. When you talk about the next one, that is the pyramid or let's say in pond ecosystem basically, the producers are less and the highest will be tertiary consumer. It means the pyramid of biomass in the aquatic system is always inverted. In ocean it is inverted. When we talk about the next pyramid that is pyramid of energy, we need to understand it is always upright. It cannot be inverted pyramid. The energy is transferred from the first trophic level to the next trophic level. Let's talk about this with respect to energy from producers to consumers and from consumers like primary to secondary and then tertiary. It's an upright pyramid basically where the producers have more you can say energy and the tertiary consumers have less energy. When you talk about ecological energetics, there are three aspects of energy flow. First is quantity of the solar energy reaching ecosystem. Second quantity of energy used by the green plant and third the pathway of the energy flow. So let's understand basically the source of energy. From the sunlight, the part which reaches on the earth is reflected back is 34% and the one that is trapped in the atmosphere is 10% and remaining 56% we can say it reaches on the earth's surface. With respect to the sunlight, reaching to the plants, only 0.02% of the sunlight is used for photosynthesis. To understand the process of energy flow, First efficiency of the producer is absorption and convert that energy basically into chemical energy. Solar energy getting converted into chemical energy. Then it is used by the consumers and finally total input of the energy is used in form of food and assimilation. Some of the energy will be then lost in the form of heat, respiration, excretion etc. And the most important that is net production we can say gross net production means how much energy is finally saved. So with respect to this let's understand the direction of energy flow. Energy can never flow from plant to the sun. It has to flow from sun to the plant as well as from herbivores to the carnivores. We need to understand from carnivores to herbivores it is not possible at all. So energy flow is always unidirectional as the energy passes. Now let's understand there is a sun there is a food plant doing the process of photosynthesis. The deer eat the plants and finally the deer is eaten up by the plant. So the it is very short you can say food chain. The, if the food chain is short then the energy supplied to the each level will be very high. So remember shorter the food chain greater is the 
energy. Let's understand what is community. Sum total of all population in a given habitat is basically community. Let's try and understand ecological successions. Plants or the life can exist in various forms. It can exist in a desert form as well as it can exist in the winter form. So what exactly it is? So we need to understand that the plants can survive in the changing atmosphere and they adapt to the changes. So there is a change which is sequential change I can say and it is in a definite order that leads finally to climax community. So gradual predictable change species of composition in a given area is ecological succession. That is the most important definition. When we talk about this, this is the grassland which gets finally converted into big forest and a tree and this is what is ecological succession. Replacement of one population of species by the other. So when we talk about succession, there are two types of succession, primary successions and the secondary succession. When we talk about primary succession, we need to understand it is the area where no living organism ever existed in the past and new organisms are getting formed there. So it is called as primary succession. Primary succession can take place in a bare rocks. It can also take place in a newly formed pond or it can also take place in cooled lava. So these are it's a very slow process basically primary succession. Let's talk about the next one that is called as secondary succession. When you talk about secondary succession it simply means life was there previously but it was destroyed due to some reason and now again life has came at that place. So we need to understand area which has lost all living organism once existed. So secondary succession becomes very easy for you know development of the stages. Now we need to understand the development of the economical stages ecological stages basically these stages are called as serial stages. So let's understand how the serial stages are built up. So first organism of the first serial stage the first one we start the life or we start the formation of ecological system they are called as pioneers. For most of the time in the mountainous area desert area lichens become the pioneers and in aquatic time the algae basically become the pioneers. So they failed they have to face adverse condition. Pioneers modify those environmental conditions so that other living organisms can also survive there. Now we need to understand it's a gradually slow and a changing process. So we need to understand every time a new generation comes. So it's a primary which leads to the secondary. So let's understand one thing. The soil first there will be growth of the stable community established in that area and that is called as climax community. Now among the amount of water that is present in the area determines the ecological succession. If more water then hydra succession. If no water then xerarch succession that is desert condition. Let's see hydra succession. What exactly happens in hydra? So there will be total water present and in water you will find different stages. Let's see the hydra succession. What happens? Water is present in abundance. So the phytoplankton starts growing in the water and this phytoplankton leads to the growth of submerged plant stage and the submerged plant stage finally when it gets stable it provides opportunity for submerged and free floating plant stage and after that they all together they further develop and gives rise to reed swamp stage where small small plants start existing into picture then finally develops much more and it forms a marshy meadow stage after this it leads to the formation of small forest or shrub stage you can say and finally at the last it grows into a complete forest that is called as climax community so from water it has reached to the forest there is a climax stage let's see the xerox succession where will the xerox succession occur that is the first question to be answered so it's a desert area 
where there is very less amount of water on rocks and on rocks algae cannot grow so lichens basically grows there and lichens are the pioneers of zera succession reproduce and survives in the area lichens produces acid that acid results in the weathering of rocks and rock break into pieces and forms soil this formation of soil leads to the growth of mosses ferns and small small trees we can say or small plants and finally what happens leads to the middle stage so small grasses comes into existence and finally shrubs and herbs comes to picture and tree is the final climax community so it's a messy condition whether zerarch or hydrarch it leads to mesic condition friends do give a like to the video if you have understood the concept of ecological succession thank you very much